Is she paralyzed? Asked a man in a clothing store with a smug expression on his face while pointing to my wheelchair bound mother. The brazenness of this man to ask such a thing to a complete stranger appalled me. You see, 20 years ago, my mom was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or more commonly known as MS. MS is an autoimmune disorder where a person's immune system attacks cells in the brain and spinal cord, forming lesions or scars. It hampers communication and coordination from the brain, causing a whole host of symptoms, including fatigue, muscle rigidity and stiffness, poor balance and many more. It is a progressive disease with no medical cure for it. For the first 10 years since her diagnosis, she had absolutely no complications. But after I turned six, her condition started becoming more evident to me. Prior to this, mom was there for everything. She was there taking me shopping, dropping me to the school bus, playing with me in the park and ferrying me to different places. Gradually, however, I noticed her involvement in my day-to-day -day activities dwindling. Her movements started getting restricted and even the simplest of tasks became arduous and exhausting for her. She went from sprinting to the gate when I was running late and styling my hair with flair to being unable to walk a few meters or move her fingers more than a couple millimeters. Eventually, my father started filling in for her wherever possible and other easier things were left for me to deal with. I never anticipated her mobility would become so impaired that she would have to start using a wheelchair every time we left the house. Initially, I was overcome with embarrassment and self-consciousness. What would people think? Reflecting on it now, it seems slightly absurd to be uncomfortable about such a thing now that I know better. It is not unusual for someone to be in a wheelchair and it simply did not matter what others thought and I learned that as time progressed. Although I'm still not a fan of excessive unwanted attention and some people openly stare and gape at us while others ask blatant questions, it has helped me realize that there are innumerable normative things we are all conditioned to feel embarrassed about that in truth aren't really that big of a concern. As our disorder progressed, it had a direct and substantial impact on our personal and family lives. There were few opportunities to go out for entertainment and participation in social events slowly came to a stop. My parents' annual visits to the neurologist while I was left home alone always resulted in me going down a rabbit hole of anxiety, dread and unease. What if there was something else wrong with my mom? What if her condition was rapidly worsening and soon she'd become bedridden? What if? Not only was my mind constantly plagued with these distressing thoughts from the mere age of six, but I was repeatedly urged by seniors in the family to be a good daughter and look after her and ease her workload by taking up household chores. Even though these words of advice were imparted in good faith, I found them vastly overbearing and inconsiderate. All of that responsibility and dependency being thrust on me was like having a dark cloud of overwhelm and trepidation following me everywhere. Likewise, being the primary caregiver, my father had to rearrange his job commitments in order to accommodate my mother's daily routine and had to become more active in domestic duties. His ability to travel for work was curtailed, so he now primarily works from home, so he may be by my mother's side as much as possible. His fortitude and resilience in this situation and determination to do whatever it takes to help in spite of any obstacles is something that I will always admire and respect. If ever faced with adversity, I hope I'm able to invoke in me these very same qualities. Nevertheless, all of that pressure from the adults pushed me to try and solemnly aid my mother. She had bought an oven to pursue her little passion of making delicacies for the family but was no longer able to. So I took over the reins and adopted that which has now become one of my most adored hobbies, baking. Another perk, if you can call it that, is the exclusive treatment we receive at airports. My mom's being a wheelchair passenger allows us to get escorted all the way to the aircraft. Cues, never heard of them. We breeze through airports like celebrities without the paparazzi. All the trials and tribulations caused by multiple sclerosis influenced my mother to start writing a blog called Small Steps, Long Pauses, describing her journey with MS. 
watching her handle her illness and all the while still try to live life as normally as she possibly could is my reason and inspiration for standing in front of you here today i believe we must all take small steps in order to achieve our dreams and desires despite the hurdles in our path but also pause to see how our words actions and behaviors affect those around us talking about my experience today has been my small step and when i pause i hope i have helped people understand become aware and feel heard thank you